Hello, I'm Amara Jones, and today is Wednesday, April 1st. This is Caffeine TV, your daily news brief, here to take you the three headline numbers in just three minutes, giving you a different take on everything from housing policy to the Real Housewives. The first number today is 1228. That's the number of yet another religious freedom bill to pass yet another state legislature, this time Arkansas's yesterday. And no, this is not an April Fool's Day joke. Rather than making you laugh, it'll make you cry. Now, the nation's largest private employer, Walmart, which is based in Arkansas, has come out against the bill, but the governor of that state, Asa Hutchinson, has indicated that he He'll sign it, setting up a similar showdown in Arkansas as to what is already going on in Indiana, where also yesterday the governor of that state, Mike Pence, said that he was going to issue a legislative clarification to underscore that the bill can't be used to discriminate, saying that he was sorry that the world had, quote, gotten the impression, close quote, that it could do so. But this is only the latest example of the way in which the hard right is turning back the clock in America. Also in Indiana, there's currently an outbreak of HIV due mainly to the fact that the state forced Planned Parenthood to close their network of rural clinics and also where a woman was tried, convicted, and sentenced recently for terminating her pregnancy even though abortion is legal under the United States Constitution. Well, about the reemergence of all these social wars, Stephen King, the author, said it best in a tweet yesterday Yesterday, a frozen turd is still a turd. The next number today is 2 million. That's the number of votes that Muhammad Buhari received yesterday, enough to unseat current Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan in that nation's elections yesterday, underscoring the fact that Jonathan's luck had indeed run out. Now, Buhari is a former military dictator of Nigeria from 1983 to 1984 and is famous for his war on indiscipline, in which he had convicts executed publicly on beaches, had soldiers roam the streets, and beat anyone who jumped lines outside of stores and is infamous for jailing Fela Kuti. Now, Buhari, who is Muslim, defeated Jonathan, who is Christian, mainly on the promise that he would turn back Boko Haram and end corruption. But as we've spoken about here before, those two things are linked. One of the reasons why the military is having such a hard time against Boko Haram is due to corruption. And so Buhari has his work cut out for him in the months and years ahead. But all of this, in the end, has the great makings of a Fela Kuti song. The last number of today is three. That's the number of times that comedian Chris Rock has been pulled over by police in the last seven weeks, most recently last night, when he sent out a tweet to fans asking them to wish him luck because he was being pulled over by the police yet again. Now, the persistent police stoppings of Chris Rock, who, according to the Daily Mail, is worth $70 million, underscores the fallacy of the politics of black respectability, which basically argues that if black men pull up their pants and speak the Queen's English, that they'll be able to navigate society with no problems. This was most recently articulated by Common, who said that white racism would end if blacks merely extended their hand in friendship to whites for which he was roundly criticized. But all of this just reminded me of a joke that Chris Rock told in one of his comedy routines that even though he's rich, most white people would want to switch places with him and being stopped by police three times in the last seven weeks underscores why.